What's going on everybody, it's Cormine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be revisiting what's in my home lab. So if you remember last year I did a what's in my home lab for 2023 and this year I'm going to do what's in my home lab for 2024 because we've added on a lot to it over the year. I made some videos about some of the projects that added on to my home lab like the tenant server rack, the Zima board, the NAS and some other stuff but today we're going to go with a little more detail into it and we're going to go over what the hardware is, what it does for me in my home lab and go on from there. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to cover, probably one of the newer things in my home lab, is the Zima board. So I did get this sent over to me from Ice Whale. Super nice board. Uh, we made a bunch of videos on it if you remember. I have the add-on card to add the M.2 drives. I have the little Y cable to do the SSDs. I can do two if I want, but I only did one. Um, all in all, this was a really nice addition. We made a lot of different videos with it, a lot of different content. Um, we made stuff like the OpenSense router, we did the, the Proxmox Ultimate Home Server Board. Um, we ran a ton of different stuff over that. We ran like a pie container, Jellyfin server, we ran um, the Docker environment. We did a lot of stuff over the single board. I don't have a dedicated use for it just yet. I do have a couple ideas floating around, but this is something that's newer in my home lab and is definitely going to get a lot of use in the future. I just don't know what yet. So now that we talked about the Zim board, let's move over to the Tenon server rack and my NAS setup. So let's get into that. So this is the Tenon server rack. If you remember, we worked on some videos for this. And if I come over here and open it up, we have a few different things running in here. So from top down, I have a simple eight port, one gig switch. It's just a regular network switch just to tie in everything in the rack. I have a HP Elite Desk, so that's one of the mini PCs. That's actually the Barmine Tech server. Um, if we come down to the next one, I have another HP Pro Desk. That's my regular home lab server. It might be reversed, I forget. Um, but one's used for like a Docker environment and the Samba NAS, and one's the Barmine Tech server. I think this one's actually the Barmine Tech server that we work with in our videos. If I come down here a little bit more, I have a four port PoE switch. It's just a simple TP-Link switch. I got it for like 30 bucks off Amazon. And the same thing with this one, it's just another TP-Link switch. I think it was, actually these are Netgear, sorry. These are both Netgear switches. Um, I think this one was about 30 bucks and this one was probably about 20. And the reason I got these was for these Raspberry Pis down here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we have one over here and they have the PoE hat on them. And the purpose of the PoE switch, was you can see there's the other pie was so i could tuck the pies in here and not have to run power cables because i don't have a pdu in this case this rack yet because i didn't find something small enough that i liked so i did poe from the switches to power the pies and the pies are in the adguard home and pie hole servers but i've actually migrated from that and we'll cover that when we get to my main server if we close this up now and we come up here i have my qnap nas so this is a three drive, uh, three bay drive NAS, which I do have two drives currently in it because my last drive I didn't realize didn't wasn't going to work in my RAID. So I have two 18 terabyte drives in there, I think. And this runs my Plex environment. It runs the Docker environment for Plex, and then it runs the QNAP OS to do all the storage. I'll go into the panel and show this off as well. But this whole box runs my Plex environment. I, the only things I upgraded was I added more RAM and I added M.2 drives for cache, which I'll show in the video. I'll show all the settings. Coming over here, I have my main tower server. This is the server I actually built a couple of years ago. I've showed pictures of it a lot in the past. So, I mean, I'll throw one in maybe, but it's a absolute unit of a server. It runs a lot of old equipment, so it sucks up a lot of power. And it's not the most efficient server, but it gets the job done, does everything I ask. It has plenty of power, so that's why I still run it. And then just next to it, I have my UPS. It's just a big APC UPS. Uh, this server uses a lot of power, so I need something that has a long battery life for that. And then when I factored in everything else. So that's all of my equipment outside. Now let's go over what they actually do. All right, so now let's go over what everything actually runs. This is Flame Dashboard. I actually have a video where I go over how to make this. And going forward, I think in the new year, I might start to look at other options. So keep an eye out. We might see new videos on this. But let's get right into what I run. So let's start off with the NAS because that's first up here. So I'll just log in real quick. And again, this is the, Q the QNAP. I think it's a TS364. 
I don't know if they still make this NAS. Let's open up the control panel and see. Yeah, you can see it's a TS-364, so if I do... I don't know if it's still available, but you can see it on the QNAP site. So yeah, so this is my NAS. I have the 4 gig model. I actually upgraded the RAM on it, so you can see I actually have 16 gigs now in there. So I put two more sticks in there of uh, 8 gig RAM, and then I put the two NVMe drives in there. So let's see if I can find that. So storage, and then you can see in here I have the HDDs and I have two M.2 SSDs. So it works out, and let's see, my whole storage pool is pretty large. So there's there are 18 terabyte drives that I have in there. So after the array gets made and everything, it gets knocked down. But I have a pretty large array for Plex, and it works out because I have a ton of media on there. And then on top of this, I have Container Station running Docker. So it's a mix in here, but I don't use this panel. I actually use the Portainer panel and I link it so I can manage everything out of here. So if I come in here, you can see I have my NAS. And in here, I have some different stuff running. So I try to do a book server, but I have all the important stuff like Overseer running, I have the R's. I have SAB, I have Tatsuli so I can see what people are watching to keep track of stuff. But I run all this off my NAS because I actually used to run it off the mini PC you saw in the 10 inch server rack and I ended up frying it and I lost all the data so I figured if I run it on the NAS at least there's snapshots running so I could always back up to it. But that's what runs on the NAS and then there's just the normal stuff so it's just Plex and uh, that's what runs on the NAS, you see here's Plex. And this is a great tool because there's a lot of power and now that I have the cache drives in there it's a lot quieter because I had actual NAS drives in there. I have Seagate Iron Wolf drives in there and they are so loud. You've probably heard them on a bunch of videos, you might have just heard them before. But ever since I had the cache drives it really quieted stuff down so I love that now. Uh, but I do want to relocate and possibly rework the, the server rack so I can get it in there. While we're in Portainer I'll go into my local machine. So this actually now runs off my server. So I, I made another VM to prevent the loss of data again. So after I lost everything, I wanted my important containers to be backed up. So this I can roll back to a VM if I needed them. So I run my important containers on here. I run Cloudflare, my dashboard, um, and then my WireGuard server. So it's important because I always need connections. So these are the most important containers to run. So I do run these off a of VM on my server. The, the big one that I showed you is under my desk. I'll show you the VM when I get into that one, but that's just next. And then finally, we have one more Portana server that I actually run. So it only runs a couple things, though. It runs Duplicity, Samba, and Your Backup. So I don't really use Your Backup anymore, but Duplicity does run for me all the time to back up my schoolwork and important files on my Samba share to make sure I don't lose them. So I do have videos on both of these, and I can put links in the below in the description. Um, but Samba Share I use every day, and Duplicity runs for me on a schedule to back up the Samba Share. So that's my last Docker environment that I run. Now we can move over to the next thing. We move over to probably the next one's going to be my Proxmox server. So this has been on my network the longest. This is what really started my home lab a couple of years ago. You see, I have a bunch of VMs that run off of it in containers now because we changed some stuff. So. This server currently has about 72 gigs of RAM. It has two 8-core CPUs, which gives me 32 threads. And I have a disk that's running out of space for my local drive for Proxmox. But that's okay. If I reboot the server, I get my space back. Um, I built this server a couple years ago. It's got two Xeon E5 2670s at 2.6 gigahertz. Um, they're old. They're power hungry. If I had to do it again, I wouldn't use them. I'd probably use something on like the Ryzen Spectrum and use one of those chips in a build and build something way more modern because the Ryzen chips are becoming more available at a better price. So instead of paying, I think I pay like $10 a CPU for these, I would much rather pay like 50 bucks for one and get like one 8 core or one 10 core or whatever and use that instead on a more modern board. Because like I said, this server sucks power and for what I do, I really I, I use it because I need all the power that it puts out, but I could definitely rework stuff. 
So if you watched my last couple videos, I made the pie hole containers for the Zemo board. And I actually did that here. And I will show you real quick. So I have pie hole one, and then I have pie hole two. And I put these in containers just like we did in the video. And it works really good so far. I just did this cut over over the weekend. So you can see this is pie hole two. So it's my secondary DNS server. So it's not as getting as many hits, but pie hole one is. I actually just migrated from using AdGuard Home and a combination of pie hole. I've just always used pie hole and I like it a lot better. And some of the stuff I read about AdGuard, I really wasn't a fan about, but pie hole definitely works really good. And I have two of them for redundancy. Close that one out. So these work really well. So those just run out of LXC containers and Proxmox. My next one is my Seed VM. So I actually use this for school. We did a lot of lab work out of this. So I just virtualized it and put it all on my server so I could access it anywhere. Um, currently this is off, but this is my open game panel. This is the web server for it. And here's the main server for it. So open game panel is just a web server used to host games and everything else. I do it locally. It makes it a little simpler, but it is pretty old, so some of the stuff really is outdated and confusing to work with. Um, my friend uses this all the time, and he helps me usually when I have questions, but it works pretty well. The next thing is I have a VM for work. This might be the smallest Windows VM you ever see, because it only runs on 4 gigs of memory, and it has a 32 gig drive. So if you know Windows 11, or Windows 10 this runs, if you know Windows 10, 32 gigs for the whole disk is super tiny, and I don't know how this still works, but it does. But this is just a RDP machine, so it's not like I'm actually storing data on it, so it's not the end of the world. Next, I have my Windows 11 machine that I use pretty much every day. Um, this has a little bit bigger of a, a resource pool. It has 4 cores, 12 gigs of RAM, and has a 250 gig disk. Um, it works really well. I use this every day. We already covered the open game panel machine, and then here's the Docker machine that I showed you that I re-virtualized. So it has a 100 gig disk, 8 gigs of RAM, and I gave it 6 cores of CPU because the Docker environment gets really hungry, and I wasn't sure what else I was going to put on this at the time. But this is my Proxmox environment. It is running 8.1.3. There might be a, later, a newer version since, but I don't have a lot of disk space, so it's hard to update. But um, yeah, so that's my that's my Proxmox environment that runs off that big server under my desk. I mean, other than that, really, like I have Uptime Kuma. This runs off a VPS, so I just have it so I can keep track of everything that I run for up downtime, and it just sends me Discord notifications. So that does run off a VPS that I rent out. Works out really good. Uh, the only other thing I really run in the lab right now is Octoprint, but I have that off because I haven't really printed anything. So if you don't know, Octoprint is for 3D printing. I have it on a Raspberry Pi. It sits next to my printer, it's connected to it, it helps me control my printer, push files to it, instead of running back and forth with an SD card, and then have to use the little panel on the printer. So Octoprint's really nice to run. And that's really about it. That's really what's in my home lab to start 2024. So yeah, that's my home lab. I mean, uh, I really tried to simplify it over the last year. I am still trying to cut stuff down, so I am trying to build some new machines. Like I said, I'm really trying to cut down on my big server. I've been saying it for months now, and it just hasn't happened yet because I just haven't had time to do the build. I think I actually might rebuild my workstation and turn my workstation into a server, but I need to be able to build a new workstation. I just haven't had the time yet or you know the resources to do it. But we'll see. 2024 is a lot of time still, and you never know, maybe 2024 I'll build my new server. I really am kind of thinking about just putting on like a 1U chassis and sliding in. I have a little slant rack. I might just put it on the 1U rack, and then I have all the other equipment that I can tie into it, and then everything which should be rack mounted and make it easier. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, like I said, I have a lot of time left in 2024. You never know what new projects might come up. But that's my home lab. That's what I'm running with. If you have any questions about what I'm running or why I'm running it or how I'm doing it, you can drop a comment below. You can join my Discord server. Or we can chat about it. Um, but yeah, so that's it. And uh, I appreciate everybody for watching. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you liked a little tour around my lab. And I will see you in the next video. Um, before we leave, I do have a Discord server. I have a link below for that. And I'll have some links below from Amazon equipment that I normally use. If you guys want to check those out, they are affiliate links, so it does help me out a little bit. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, everybody.
please subscribe, like the video, it helps a lot. And if you want to hit the bell notification, you get notified when I post videos. So you know, and you can watch them, it'd be great. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.